Hey guys, and welcome to a brand new video here on FPL Now, your number one source for tips, tricks, and everything you need to know for Fantasy Premier League football. Today, we're going to be going over some wildcard drafts for game week 11. So, if you're excited for the video, drop a like down below. Let's try and hit 35 likes. Leave a comment who are you thinking of bringing in this week. Subscribe if you're brand new. Let's get into the video. So, as always, with these wildcard videos, we go over three different drafts, and hopefully, if you are on your wildcard this week, it can give you a little bit of advice on who to bring in or if you're just wanting to know who to transfer in this week i also talk in depth about like all the players that i'm thinking of bringing in on a potential wild card so this is the first draft and in goal we have foster and sanchez foster actually got a price rise so he's now 4.1 i'm not really surprised because he is a pretty much guaranteed start at this point and it was only a four mil keeper um but the only bad thing about Watford is their next bunch of fixtures are just absolutely awful like you're not gonna be playing him for Arsenal United Leicester Chelsea or City are you let's be honest um the main reason that he's in the team is just because he's a cheap keeper and if you do have a really really bad fixture with your main keeper he could always come in and um, hopefully get you some points but Sanchez is in goal now because they did have their tough fixtures City and Liverpool um wasn't great I mean he got four points against City only one point against Liverpool Liverpool. Um, very crazy weekend of fixtures, by the way. 2-2 uh, Brighton and Liverpool. City lost. Um, Chelsea won. United won. It's just the table's all over the place at the moment. Uh, but yeah, we have some really nice fixtures coming up for Sanchez. So Newcastle, Villa, Leeds. Um, Newcastle don't look very good. Villa definitely don't look very good. They just got destroyed. I know they had a man down um, at West Ham, but yeah, still, I mean, they got battered. Uh, and then Leeds at home. Leeds struggled against Norwich as well. So um, yeah, three really, really nice fixtures on the horizon for Sanchez. So we don't really need to worry about that. Um, coming in at the back, we have James Alexander-Arnold, Chilwell Johnson, and I'm not going to try and pronounce his name. Um, so James is just, I mean, he's just on fire at the moment, man. He's just, honestly, he's keeping Aspi out of the team at the moment. And why wouldn't he? He's literally Chelsea's top scorer in the Prem this season with four goals which is a madness because he's a right back <laughs> which is crazy like they've just spent all this money on like Lukaku <laughs> James has scored more than him and the next game is Burnley at home which is basically a guaranteed clean sheet even though they did just pummel Brentford but Chelsea are just so dominant now that it's basically a guaranteed clean sheet so honestly James is a bit of a captain choice in my opinion especially if he doesn't play in the Champions League if he plays in the Champions League this week then maybe it's going to be a little bit more interesting on whether he starts against Burnley. But I think Azpilicueta will now start in the Champions League because Azpi is a really, really good player. He's a solid defender. Um, and yeah, the, the Champions League fixture is one that they're going to win anyway. And Azpilicueta hasn't played like the last two Premier League fixtures. Um, so I could easily see Azpi playing in the Champions League and then James playing at home to Burnley in the um, in, in the weekend. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see for teams, but I'm not really too worried about James losing his place because he's on fire. He's literally scored. He scored two at the weekend. He scored the week before that. Like he's on fire. Um, Trent, I mean, not a great uh, one pointer, but um, I mean, hey, if you're going to say it was going to be two all with Brighton and Liverpool after they just dominated um, the weekend before Man United, it'd have been mad. But um, that is what happened. And they've got a tough fixture coming up next as well. West Ham away. West Ham, um, honestly, just a really, really good club at the moment. Top four, uh, rightfully so as well. It's not like they're getting lucky. They are They are playing really, really good football at the moment. Like I said, they just beat Villa 4-1. Uh, somehow Antonio didn't get on the score sheet. But, you know, we're, we're only a little bit salty about that. Uh, but yeah, Trent is in the team just because, I mean, it's Trent. Uh, Chilwell is the other player as well that I've got from the Chelsea back four or the Chelsea back five. He's also gone up to six mil now and people are still bringing him in. Uh, he seems to just be nailed now. So he's a really, really good option for that Chelsea line. Um, so yeah, if, if, if it was up to me, I'd say the most nailed players are probably Rudiger at the top and then Chilwell. And then maybe James, then Azpilicueta, and then you've got like Christiansen, Alonso at the bottom. Um, the other centre-back pairings are also interesting as well, like Christiansen could play, Thiago Silva could play. It is, it's an interesting one, but Rudiger is definitely nailed, and then it's looking like Chilwell is very nailed as well, and then James potentially nailed. Because Azpilicueta can play centre-back as well, which makes it nicer for James, because he can literally just run down the right and literally just play as like a midfielder or a right winger. Uh, and then we've got Johnson and Omo Bamidel. I definitely butchered that i apologize um both of these guys scored at the weekend <laughs> they're both 3.9 mil um johnson is keeping sufal out of the team as well like sufal is back now he's not injured anymore um he came on for an appearance in the carabao cup i do believe uh last week but yeah johnson started at the weekend and he scored he's playing really really well at the moment uh west ham fixtures a little bit difficult over the next few they've got liverpool and city in the next four 
and then they've got Chelsea as well um, and then Arsenal but I mean these are the fixtures you really want to target like I'm, I'm obviously going to be bringing Antonio in for these fixtures uh, potentially Cresswell uh, maybe even Ben Rama some of these West Ham players to really really target these fixtures uh, now the only reason that I've brought this Norwich defender in is because he's 3.9 mil and Norwich have some nice fixtures so if for whatever reason you have James and Chewell and they don't play I feel like um, this Norwich defender is going to play now, especially just because he scored. So, yeah, for whatever reason, if they don't play, Johnson or Omo Bamadel or whatever he's called uh, will hopefully come in. Uh, in midfield, we have Son, Rafinha, Salah, Foden, and then Norman. Uh, Norman was unlucky not to score, to be fair. He had a really, really good shot um, against... Uh, leads but yeah just went wide of the post but yeah I mean he's literally playing every single game he's again he's not an option that I would put in my team he's just bench fodder but again they've got some nice fixtures coming up I mean if any fixture is nice for Norwich it's the next four uh, we've got Foden coming in as well uh, got unlucky at the weekend he did get an assist but it was cancelled due to the uh, VAR everybody's best football friend so uh, yeah the only bad thing about Foden now is he's got some tough fixtures coming up also Cancelo is a player that a lot of people have brought in and I don't think like he's got a clean sheet in like the last four or something three or four which is interesting because it is city so yeah people are basically just selling their city defenders and just jumping on um chelsea especially with that laporte red card as well which was a, a massive blow to the uh, stomach if you did own him uh we've got salah as well i mean i'm going to talk about him he's just a goat uh rafinha scored against norwich like i said I, I i said like in every video i made last week don't get rid of rafinha before norwich because it's norwich and it's rafinha if if Leeds are going to score, Rafinha is probably going to be involved. And he did score. He got a nice nine points. Thank you very much. It's kind of saved my game week a little bit. But um, yeah, Rafinha, I mean, he's kind of a hold at the moment. Like Leicester, Tottenham, then Brighton, Crystal Palace and Brentford. I mean, these are the fixtures you don't really want him for. Chelsea, City, Arsenal, Liverpool. But we'll see what happens at that, at that time. And then we've got Sun as well. Obviously, Conte is looking like he is going to be the new manager. Uh, Nuno was sacked this morning. Um, and Conte is a really, really good manager. And uh, they've got Everton away. And then they've got Leeds, Burnley, Brentford, Norwich, Brighton and Leicester. So, really, really nice fixtures. Really good manager coming in. I, I mean, I, I might want to double up on Sun and Kane. Because I, I think big things are going to be happening at Tottenham now. And then up front, we've got Jamie Vardy, Tony, and Huang. Um, Jamie Vardy, I think a lot of people are going to be selling, but I don't think they should. They've got Leeds away next. Leeds aren't a very... They, they only just beat Norwich. Um, they're not very good at the back. And I think I think Vardy will have a really, really nice time against Leeds. So I wouldn't sell him. Chelsea at home is a tough one. But then after that, he's got Watford, Southampton, Villa, and Newcastle. So maybe you want to keep him for that. I don't know. Like You could also bring in Kane, who has some really, really nice fixtures. Because Kane's fixtures, like I say, just as well as Suns are. I mean... It's each to their own. If you can afford Kane anyway, it's a little bit more expensive. Uh, Tony is also in this team, and that is just simply because he's got Norwich and Newcastle. And he's on pens. It's just a really good player to have. Um, he didn't... I mean, they got destroyed by Burnley, let's be honest. But, um, yeah, he's, he's a nice little option. And then Huang as well. Uh, at the time I'm recording this, Everton and Wolves haven't played yet. So, barring any injuries or anything like that, um, Huang would be in this team as well. He is very cheap. 5.7. Seems to be starting. Again, I don't know. If the team sheets out tonight and Huang isn't starting, I apologize. But he's in this team at the moment because he's a cheap striker. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you could, I mean, how much money is left on this team? 0 0.1, yeah. So you kind of need Huang on this team. But like I say, very expensive at the back. Expensive midfield. Nice up front. I do really, really like this draft. Um, coming up next, it is a Sun and Kane draft. Like I said, I just spoke about how, like, I don't know, optimistic I am now about Tottenham. I'm not a Spurs fan or anything like that. But I just think now that Conte is coming in, he will properly sort them out at the back he's a very very good defensive manager um and yeah i mean son and kane i think will just strive under him uh so we have foster and ramsdale in goal now foster we've already spoke about ramsdale i mean what a performance man what a performance against leicester that save from madison's free kick was reduct like that was just stupid that was out of this world the only issue i have about ramsdale at the moment like yeah they've got a really nice fixture against watford but then they've got liverpool but then they've got newcastle but then they've got united everton southampton and watford but then they've got Leeds, Norwich, and Wolves. So it's very much like good fixture, bad fixture, good fixture, bad fixture. Uh, Ramsdale is obviously he's, he's, he's set in stone now. He's going to be the Arsenal number one. I don't think Leno's getting back into the team, especially with performances like that. He made how many saves of the weekend? Like six or seven? Might have even been more. But yeah, he's just in the form of his life. Uh, Rudiger's in here instead of Chilwell, just for the certainty, just for the guarantee that you are going to be getting a Chelsea player playing every single week. Uh, Trent's in as well. Uh, James is in this team as well. Again, you do have um, one mil in the bank for this, and I'll talk about why later on. But if you didn't want James, you wanted Chilwell instead, you could play him. Or you could have uh, Chilwell and James if you really wanted to. The only reason Rudiger's in is just simply because he's, he's definitely nailed. And if you want that 
I don't know, cemented player at the back of the Chelsea line, then yeah, Rudiger's your go-to player. Johnson, we've already spoke about. Liveramento, um, I think he's like 4.4 now. Uh, yeah, he's got Villa, then Norwich coming up, so really nice fixtures. Liverpool, tough, but I mean, he's, like I say, he's be basically bench fodder, and then comes on if one of your Chelsea players don't play, or one of your midfielders don't play. It is what it is. Uh, spoke about Son, Rafinha, Salah, uh, Sissoko's just on there for bench fodder. Uh, Mbuemo, Mbuemo, or whoever you say his name, he's got Norwich and Newcastle at home. Um, like I say, he didn't play, I don't think, in he didn't play at the weekend, but you know he is. He, he will be fine now. He's not. I don't think he's flagged anymore or anything like that. So yeah, he should be um, good to go. And then we've got Kane as well. I just think the Kane Son partnership under under Conte is just going to be really really good. Um, and I think people are going to be jumping on that. But the reason that you've still got a mill in the bank, like yeah, you could opt for like a different striker or whatever. The reason is um, is because after Kane's fixtures, um, like after this Leeds, Burnley, Brentford, Norwich, Brighton, Leicester, you could then bring in um, Ronaldo, who's going to be a little bit more expensive not like loads more like I say you've got a little bit more money to play with um, because he's only 12.4 at the, at the moment so you still have 0 0.7 at the back so you could bring in Chilwell which is another point too um, there but yeah Ronaldo's fixtures um, aren't great over the next couple but then he has Arsenal, Crystal Palace, Norwich, Brentford, Brighton, Newcastle, Burnley, Wolves and Aston Villa that is such a good fixture run that you're gonna want Ronaldo so you could easily get rid of Kane after these like next four fixtures and then bring Ronaldo in for Norwich away, which is, like I say, one of the best fixtures you can have. So yeah, Ronaldo and Kane really do swap nicely with fixtures. So I'm definitely going to be bringing in Ronaldo 100%, um, or at least a few United players. Like, it's crazy. They get battered by Liverpool, but then they batter Tottenham. So it's one of them. Like, do you go with him? Like, Ollie's at the wheel, is he? Who knows? But um, yeah, that's that's why you've got like a little bit more money in the bank for this team. So yeah, I, I think Ronaldo is definitely a really good option after the next uh, few weeks. And the third and final draft we're gonna go over, Sanchez in, and Foster in goal. Uh, we've already spoken about that. Johnson was spoken about, Trent was spoken about. Uh, we only have Chilwell out of the Chelsea lineup in this team though, and that's because the money is being used more in midfield. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit of a risky one because, you know, Johnson, he is looking like he's playing instead of Sufal now, but that could easily change. Uh, the Norwich defender could easily change. Livermento is going to play every week, so that's not a massive problem. But, you know, they're playing for Southampton. So I'm, I'm not really a massive fan of this draft, but I'm obviously going to go over why the midfield is so expensive. Uh, so in, in midfield, we have Zaha, Rafinha, Salah, Foden, and Smith-Rowe. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the midfield, like Zaha, I mean no one was expecting him to score against City um, but the next fixtures for Zaha are actually really nice he has Wolves, Burnley, Villa, Leeds which are all really nice fixtures United and then he has Everton, Southampton, Watford Tor uh, T Tottenham and Norwich so he's on pens as well you could opt in to bring Gallagher who is a lot cheaper um, the only reason I'm going for Zaha is just because he is on pens but Gallagher is I think a lot I think he's like a mil cheaper or something so yeah he, he is more than though he's actually only 5.6 so that'd give you 1.9 in the bank so I guess you could do that you could go the Gallagher route and then I don't know maybe get rid of uh Livermento and bring in bring in a Chilwell or something if you really really wanted to um not Chilwell because we have already got him Reese James I, I was gonna say uh, which would um still leave you with 0 0.4 in the bank so you could do that you could go with Gallagher over Zaha which to be fair might be better I think I would prefer two Chelsea players at the back um than Zaha and Gallagher like I say he's still He's, he's popping off. He, he obviously got really big returns at the weekend. He got 13 points, which is really nice. Before that, though, he... I mean, he wasn't doing great. Like, it's a little bit knee-jerky, but like I said, if you're on your wild card, you have time to change it around. Rafinha, Salah, Foden, Smith-Rowe. Again, Smith-Rowe is just popping off. He's only 5.6, but again, just like Ramsdale, the fixtures aren't great. Like, what for the home? You could see him scoring in that game. Liverpool's going to be tough, but then Newcastle, you could see him scoring. United, Everton, Southampton, West Ham. Arsenal look good at the moment, though. They, they look really, really good. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, maybe you don't want to jump on Arsenal players yet. Yeah, I would not blame you for that, um, but it is what it is. Uh, and then we also have Kane up front, uh, Tony, and then Jimenez. As well as that, you could, after Jimenez's fixtures go bad, like he has Crystal Palace, West Ham, Norwich, Burnley, is when you could then get rid of Jimenez and bring in Antonio because Antonio's fixtures, like Antonio's not on any of these, um, but his fixtures get really, really good again. Like after the Chelsea game, he's got Burnley, Arsenal, then he's got Norwich, Southampton, Watford, Crystal Palace, Leeds, United, Watford again, uh, Leicester, Newcastle, and Wolves, which is a really, really nice fixture run for Antonio. Um, so yeah, I would probably bring him in around that time again. And then you've got Kane again. I'm just I'm I'm feeling really optimistic about Conte. 
Austin and how he's going to change the Spurs lineup and everything, or well, not the lineup, but how he's going to just make them solid at the back and everything. So they are my wild card drafts for game week 11. I apologize. There was no knee jerk reaction video yesterday. I had a Halloween house party on Saturday and a little bit hungover. I'm not going to lie to you. I still watched all the games. I just watched them in bed and there was no chance I was getting out of bed to um, record a video because I wasn't feeling too good. But uh, I apologize. That won't be happening every week. Uh, we'll be doing a knee jerk video for game week 12. So don't worry about that. But that is everything for the wildcard video. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, have a fantastic rest of your day. Leave a like, subscribe if you're brand new. And until next time, peace.